I'm Daisy Victoria and today I'm going to show you guys how to make a chemise which you can wear with your renaissance and fantasy clothing. I typically make this chemise with regular length sleeves but the one I'm going to be making today actually has really long sleeves and that's because I'm going to use it for a gown with a lot of puff and slash details in the sleeves and I want to be able to bring the chemise sleeves up and poof them through the slashes. So I'm giving it extra length to try that out. This chemise is really versatile. You can wear it with a lot of different stuff. So I really like it and I find that I wear this type of chemise with my renaissance and fantasy clothing more than any other style. So it's a really good one to have. I also created a PDF for this tutorial. So if you guys want the PDF tutorial, so you can kind of follow along step by step. I'll put the link for that in the description. The chemise is based on your standard like 16th century chemise. This tutorial is really good for all levels actually. If you're an advanced sewer, it'll be super easy. If you're a beginner sewer, I really think you can do this. Like even if all you can do is sew straight seams, that's pretty much what you're doing here is sewing straight seams. So I think you'll be fine. And um, if you want additional help, you know, that PDF tutorial has like close up photos and stuff and actually has, um, you know, charts drawn out for your measurements. So that could be a little bit more helpful for you too. Some features of this chemise are that, well, mine are made of white linen. You know, you could use another fabric if you want to. Um, cotton is really good as well. I really like linen because it's cool to the skin um, and it feels nice and I like for my undergarments to feel nice. This has like a sort of a, a boat neckline and then it's got all rectangular construction. It's got sleeves, long sleeves and I usually make mine you know about right below my knee but you could make it, you know, as short as a shirt or all the way down to the ground. It's up to you on length. And, you know, this can easily be hidden completely underneath a dress. You can puff the sleeves out. You can wear it with a sleeveless dress. You know, you can put a part lid on top of it. You can have an open, you know, area like the shirt I'm wearing now, pretty much. It's got many possibilities. So, without further ado, let's get to making this thing. So I've cut out my pattern pieces according to the measurements I want. So for this chemise, for this chemise I have two body pieces which turned out to be half the width of the fabric so that was perfect. Um, I made this one um, kind of short like to my mid to lower thigh um, you can make it all the way down to full length if you want to. It would just be a longer um, length of the piece. And then I cut out sleeves. So I'm actually doing an experiment with super duper long sleeves so I can use them to like bunch up into the puffs in the sleeves I'm making on my gown. But <laughs> usually when I make this, the sleeve is only like a little bit longer than the length of my arm, you know, about to here. And then these also, I worked them out to be half the width of the fabric, so that's super easy. Um, you can make them thinner, you know, less wide if you want to, and you can also make them wider. Um, then you'll need more fabric if you make them wider because you'll have to, you know, cut one and then cut the next one further down. Then I cut these gussets. These are going to go uh, basically at the armpit where the sleeve meets the rest of the chemise. And then this is my neckband. So this is as long as I want the neckband to be. And that's all the pieces. So this is really um, not too much cutting involved and it's all rectangles. All right, so step one is to sew the gussets onto the top of the sleeve. So you're just gonna sew it onto one side. So this is the top of the sleeve here and this is beginning the length that goes down from the shoulder. So just one side of the gusset onto there, I already did it, and I left a little bit up here. It's about half an inch because that's my seam allowance and that'll make it easier to sew the other side. So what's gonna happen is that it's gonna go onto the other side of the sleeve like that. So 
I'm just going to take the other side and attach it that way. So the gusset is attached as like a V in there. So then the top of the sleeve ends up being extended a little bit. At this point, the top of your sleeve should look something like this. So you've got this extra gusset coming out of the side here. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna sew that seam down the length of the sleeve. So just from right below the gusset down to wherever the bottom of the sleeve is. On these sleeves, that is a very long <laughs> seam indeed but on most sleeves it's going to be about to here or so and if you wanted to later put cuffs on the end of a pair of sleeves you would want to leave a little bit open so you could like gather the end into a cuff and then have an opening but for this one we're not doing cuffs we're just going to sew it straight down and when you sew up next to the gusset you're just going to match like where the gusset sits in there So at this point, I have sewn the side seam all the way down my sleeve. These are my really long sleeves. These are going to be like all the way down to the floor, so they're going to be crazy. So once you've sewn the side seam, your sleeve is ready to be attached to the front and the back of your chemise. So the simplest way is to attach the gusset there at the top. So you've got body and then it kind of comes out into the sleeve. But what I found fits a little better is if we just bring the sleeve down a little bit in there. So we're actually not putting the top of the gusset at the top of the body. We're putting it down a little bit. And when you do this, if you put more of the sleeve on the back, that'll make the back go up a little bit higher. You don't have to do that. It's just an option. Um, I find that that doesn't really make so much of a difference for me because these are underneath my gowns anyway, but if that's something that you guys want to play with, then you actually might want to cut the back piece a little bit longer than the front piece of the body so that you have more to put up higher. I'm going to pin these on, so again, right sides together. I'm going to make sure I know how much I am putting it down into the body. Um, I like to do about three inches. I find that that's a very good amount. So I'll actually go ahead and measure on my body piece. Three inches down. So that three inches is occupied by the actual sleeve and the gusset is below that. There we have it. That's the body underneath. This is the sleeve over here and the gusset, right? So you're going to do that on both sleeves and you know you can just go ahead and attach them both to the same body piece if you want to. That way you know like you're attaching them both to the front and then we'll do the back next. Okay, so now I sewed the sleeves on. So this is the front of my chemise. Could be the back too, it doesn't really matter at this point. So I've got a sleeve over here and a sleeve over here. So what I've done is I've sewn three inches of the sleeve as well as that gusset. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to take the other side of that, you know, so it'll be folded like that so we have the armpit and I'm going to sew that same thing onto the back side. So the front and back both are going to look exactly like this, you know, with the three inches sewn to the body piece and then the gusset sewn to the body piece. I know gussets can be a little bit weird at first, but I think if you just follow the layout and you just practice by doing a few, they'll start to get a little bit easier. So now I sewed that onto the back of my chemise too. So the front and the back both look like this. And you can kind of see that this is 
double, you know, because there's the front and the back. Hey! So the next thing I need to do is just sew the side seams. So that's from basically from the armpit gusset down to the hem of the chemise on both sides of the body. So I went ahead and sewed my side seams. I also hemmed my sleeves and the hem, the bottom of my chemise. So at this point, that's all finished off. The only thing left to do is the neckline. So the neckline is huge right now. Look, it's like hard for me to even put it all on the screen. It's so big. But we're gonna gather that into our neckband. So that neckband you cut out, you wanna sew the edges together so that it's a tube. Ha ha. So and now there's two ways you can do this. One way is that you can sew a gathering stitch and then you can gather the neckline in. Um, my personal preference is actually to pleat it in because I feel like that's the easiest way to get it really even. And pleating is a skill that you're going to use honestly in a lot of historical garments. So if you are making this for a historical garment, um, you know what? I'm going to teach you a skill that you're going to need later and that's pleating. Now when I pleat stuff, I like to make it as easy as possible. So I can measure out, right, how many pleats do I want, you know, measure it, divide it, blah blah blah. Or I can just keep dividing things up into equal distances and I don't have to measure anything. So here's the edge, right? I'm going to mark the other edge. So what I have just done is divided this in half. Now I'm going to divide each of those in half. So um, you know, I can match up those pins and then I've got a half over here, a half over here. Then you're going to keep dividing these sections in half. So right now I have four sections. I'm going to divide those in half, you know, so I'm halving that one. So when you divide your four in half, then you're going to end up with eight sections. So basically you just keep doing this until your sections are small enough. I'm thinking that on this one, um, you know, 16 is probably enough, so one more division should be fine. You could make it 32 also. It's up to you. I think 16 or 32 would both be okay. And actually, come to think of it, I think I usually do 32 on mine because I'm just kind of thinking about what my existing chemises look like. It's been a long time since I've made one, so uh, I made myself like uh, several of them, like all at once, you know, not, not that long ago, several years ago though, and they've lasted me so well that I haven't needed any new ones. But yeah, thinking about them, I think... I usually do 32. You know, if you did 16, I think it would work out though. So then we're gonna divide up the neckline the same way. Oh, so it's important to note what's the back too. So I'm like, <laughs> I like all my seams pressed toward the back, so I press them this way, which means this is the back. Uh, honestly, it doesn't really matter unless you're just particular like I am. Like, you could press your seams in all different directions, and you still have a chemise that functions. So that's a really good thing about this. Okay, so what you want to do is mark the center back, and then mark the center front. And then, guess what? You know that halfway is going to be halfway on your sleeve, because your front and back are the same size. So you can go ahead and mark that. Now I thought I was so clever when I figured out how to divide things up evenly this way for pleating. I started saving myself so much effort. I'm sure that I'm not the only one that's figured this out, but um, if you haven't, please take advantage of my experimentation. Um, so just like on the neckband, we're just gonna keep dividing that up. And because I made 32 sections on my neckband, I'm going to make 32 sections on this too so I can match those up. Okay, so right now I have 8, 
So dividing it one more time will give me 16 and then another time will give me 32. So once you've got all of those measured out, so you can do 32 like me or a different number, then we're going to match these up with the neck band. So I'm gonna find that center back pin and match it up to the center back of my neck band. And I'm just gonna pin that there. And then I'm gonna match up everywhere else I have a set of pins. Okay, so it looks like I only did 16 on my neck band. I'm not really sure why I did that. Um, I was probably, you know, wanting to move on in the tutorial, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm gonna need to measure out in between each of those still. If you make that mistake like I did, you can tell because those next pins almost matched up perfectly, and that makes no sense because there's a lot more volume in this than in the neck band. Alright, so now I have 32 sections measured in each the uh, neck line and the neck band. So I'm just gonna start bringing those pins together. So I'm getting this happening. So once you match them all up, you have this. It's a neckline, it's kind of pleated in, but it's all like wavy and stuff. <laughs> So this is where you get to do the pleating. So if you're experienced or if you're like me and you like to live on the edge, you can actually do the pleating while you sew on the sewing machine. I just kind of sew and you know fold each pleat as I go. But what I recommend to you, especially if it's your first time or even like your third time, um, as I did for many of my first you know, however many times to, was actually pin the pleats down first. So you just want to like fold, you know, each place you have that and pin it down. So then it's flat and you're going to do that all the way around and then you're going to sew over those so it's attached. Um, and don't sew over your pins, you know, take them out before you get to them. <laughs> so once you sew that on, it should look like this. You've got your pleated neckline with this neck band attached. So to finish it off, what we're going to do is we're going to fold this down so that it kind of matches where the pleats are, and then we're going to fold it down again, and we're going to pin it. And we're going to do that all the way around the neckline. So once you have that pinned, it's just time to sew it down. Now, if you're going for as historically accurate as possible, you may want to hand sew this from the inside. Um, I'm thinking for this one, I'm gonna be a little naughty and machine sew it. I've actually machine sewed everything on here and I also serged the seams on the inside. But in all honesty, this is gonna be completely underneath my gowns and even if I have a historically accurate gown, nobody is going to see my neckline. So I don't really think it matters for me. So because of that, I'm gonna sew on the outside with the machine to make sure that my seam matches the edge. So finally, it's done. This is my neckline. It's all pleated in there. And then this goes down to the hemline and if you have regular size sleeves, they end about here, but I have experimented with these super long ones, and when I finish my gown, I'm gonna try it with the gown and puff it through. Doesn't it look fabulous? These are my long sleeves. Ooh. <laughs> so when I put my dress on, you know, they're gonna actually puff through the bits of the dress. Whee! It's very cool. And these are so comfy. The linen is so nice. I like it. Did you guys like this video? Did you learn something? 
Are you ready to make your chemise? Don't forget if you want the extra tutorial, I'll put the link for that in the description as well. And if you like this kind of stuff and you want to see more, make sure you come back to my channel. You can subscribe um, or don't, whatever you want, you know, just come back because I'll be here uh, in my sewing land where I sew stuff all the time. Yeah. All right. Wave goodbye, girls.